Welcome back guys. It's game seven. Get hyped. On Catalina of all maps. The first veto for any team in this tournament so far. And we are finally going to see it. I'm super, super excited to see it. And especially in a matchup like PvP. Who doesn't have... Uh, I mean, Nocturnal Gaming I have chosen to go with Antoine Des. Their Protoss player. And with the, the spawn spots that we see... I mean, it, it could get really, really crazy if one player decides to go for some kind of cheese. It's just, it's such a weird and wonderful map, and I'm really excited for this game seven. Yeah, three player maps are always, uh, always a little exciting. Huh? Yeah, and I, I think with with Catalina, it's not as bad as some other ones where you can get like closer spawns because most of the spawns are pretty equally apart. But because it is quite a a small rush distance, I would say, and also it's so difficult to take a third base because wherever you take a third base, it's so cut off from your natural. So yeah. it, it almost it almost favors the cheese cheesier player or the player who likes to to be more aggressive because it's so so difficult to take that third base. And I'm really excited to see what these players are going to go for. Well, let's just hop right hop right into this puppy. Um, oh, I guess we've been feeding uh, intros, but uh, kick it off here. Never too late in the bottom right corner. We got looking to take this home for his team. It is Antoine Des. And the top left playing in the purple for Team All In and Team All In and Risen. He is Riser. Very similar builds coming out again. I'm trying to think about like these these map positions. I don't doesn't seem like it really particularly favors uh, one or the other. Uh, both of their both their naturals are kind of secluded. I guess Riser's natural is a little bit closer to uh, to Dez's, but I don't think really significantly. Uh, so yeah, I think I think maybe the only thing that Riser has for him, and I'll put that in inverted commas because it doesn't really become that important in this matchup, is that. He does have this. He has the the straight path to Antoine Dessa's natural, where you can do some kind of drops um, and start attacking the the the, na the main of Antoine Dess, where Antoine Dess has to go kind of around to get to that main, where most of the tech will be. But I, I don't think it actually will. I don't think it actually will make a a difference. To be honest, I think in PvP it's difficult to call if yeah. one prefers the other. The Riser has scouted out the location here, and uh, in the opening from Antoine, who has not yet left his base, but he's feeling confident. He's got his gateways, he's got his stalkers. He's like, whatever you're throwing at me, I'm gonna be fine. Very similar to yeah. Nexus, a little bit earlier from Riser, but pretty close. Yeah, and it also shows that they are delaying their tech for, for both for their Nexus, which means we should go into the mid game at least we're not going to see some kind of all in at least for for the next few minutes i would say which is which is pretty exciting for a game seven both players don't want to lose it for their team thought maybe one would put it on the line with some kind of cheese but it does look like they're gonna go for these macro builds looks like a robo for antoine and a twilight for riser so i i think the robo is more uh conservative yeah i agree because you can get some immortals, so you can even go into uh, observers for, in case it is DTs. But I think it is going to be Blink from from Ryzen and see. Maybe he's going to try and be a little bit aggressive with that. He's going to go for okay. So he's just going for a delayed robo. I think it's just different kind of builds where, yeah, as you said, Antoine Des goes for the safer build, whereas Ryzen is going to favor getting that tech up a bit earlier and get Blink started a little bit earlier than Antoine Des, but, but I think it's, it is going to normalize out because they're both going for the same tech, just in different orders. Yeah. Oh, season 3? <laughs> I think they're on like season 12 now or something. I don't know, they've been around <laughs> a while. Yeah, I'm surprised. It's for season 3 must have happened at least 4 or 5 years ago. Oh yeah. When, when I was still in school and that was like 5 years ago. I've only seen like the first Probably only like the first two or three seasons, but uh, yeah, I liked it. it yeah, I also only saw the first three seasons, and I kind of got tired of it and never went back. I <laughs> yeah. can imagine I'll get back to it at some point, though. 
It was pretty badass, but it, was, it started to get so like repetitive. I'm, I'm sure they thought of a way to make it not as repetitive though. But eventually, I'll get back into it. Yeah, I never really like, had any like, ambitions to be a lawyer or anything. But I think after seeing that show, I was like, I, I think I made a good call. I don't think I want to be a lawyer. It does seem like oh, a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like arguing. I wouldn't say over nothing, but it's just like I, I would get tired after the first few arguments. I'd be like, eh. Yeah, I don't care if he's guilty or not, I'm done with this. Co-workers <laughs> this, this probably is. aren't nearly as attractive, you know, it's just... Yeah, it's a grind. Yeah, more gateways, that's so more, true. <laughs> with more forges. Uh, everyone just being really, really conservative. No one, uh... Nobody wants to die to anything early on in this match point. Everyone's taking it pretty seriously. Look at the exact same army count, exact same worker count. Yeah, it's, it's actually crazy. Uh, Anton Death is going to take a third base and almost exactly the time that Ryzer is going to as well. It, it's quite crazy how weird these bullets are. I think both players are just sticking to the straight and narrow and just keeping, you know, putting all their chips on the table in, in, into a macro game, which I really like. It's not just all inning. They both want, want to win this for their teams and they, they're going to do it in, in going to be the big fights in the later game. But there's a few gateways added on for Antoine Des and he's he might be going for some kind of attack here but charge is on the way for for Ryzer so he's he, I think he's yeah he's also add, started adding on more gates he just wanted to get that tech out a bit earlier constant scouting with uh, these hallucinated Phoenix double triple checking everything everything that's going on, on the other side of the map it's starting to get a little yeah, tense both, yeah the, she was going to make the, the big move here I, I wouldn't be surprised if None of them do. If if they keep going, uh, they get up to about 65 probes and just build some units and then go for an attack there. I think we might still be in, in for a, 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 a. I would even go into the late game. I wouldn't be surprised if we even get something like carriers, but it will come down to, to engage. But they're just so equally matched in terms of probe count, in terms of army count, in terms of tech. It's just hard to see how someone takes one really good fight and just wins the game right out. Yeah, very similar time, Templar Archives as well. Um, I don't think... Who's going for charge here? Oh yeah, Riser's going for charge. Okay, charge... Oh yeah, yeah they both are, never mind. Completely missed that. Yep, just, yeah, just think, think, throwing up. Yeah, and they both have the Twilight Council, which is so standard in these if in the meta. If you don't go Disruptors, it's going to be the heavy Archon Immortal charge lot armies. Um, so it's, I mean, armies is just so so similar. I just don't see what, as I said, one uh, ta one player taking a really good fight and just ending the game. I really think it's going to go into Stargate play and into the late game. <laughs> this is great. Like almost almost the exact same time on plus two as well. Like four second difference or so. I wonder what the late game tech is going to be though. Uh, maybe just Archons. Kind of looking that way so far. Yeah, three archons yeah. coming on Antoine. I think it, it's it, it would if the game keeps going on, it would definitely get into the stage where it would be Stargate with the Fleet Beacon. Uh, at most, just play carriers because it, that is such a a, heck, a pretty big switch from the armies. And I think whoever makes more carriers wins. But Antoine Death is going to head across the map, and he's he's going to try and do some damage. And maybe do some kind of game ending damage, but I think he he might just go home. I mean, he doesn't have a war prism to back this up. So it, it's very difficult to, to really take a good fight. Yeah, just starting yeah. that that war prism now. Yeah, just poking out, seeing what's going on. No disruptors for for anybody yet. Yeah, I think they're gonna both get the disruptor play completely and just if it gets to a stage where they start to lose uh start, the army starts to you know, start losing its effect and so they'll just go into Stargate. Yeah, no Robo Bay or anything, so... Because I think Disruptors are, are really good, but if you're going to start from this point, the other player just throws two Stargates and gets starts Phoenix production and just picks up those Disruptors before they actually can shoot their balls and... Uh, it just makes them so, so ineffective. And, and empty supply in such a, and against armies that are just so, 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 so beefy. He used to loosen it's an Archon, I think maybe to tank a little bit, maybe to make his army look scary, but he's going to go for an attack here. Huge arc from Riser. Love it. Yeah, 
I don't think Antoine Dare should be attacking into this, but they are, he is going to. Uh, army supply is pretty even at this point. His Archon oh, versus Archon oh. battle is pretty hard to call. It, it seems like Antoine is getting a little bit of an edge here with these. Oh, but so many Immortals sticking in that back line for Riser. Yeah, all these Immortals for for Antoine Dessa's down, and those are, those are the real beefy part of the army. And there's a, a few Archons to tank a bit a, for a bit. And I think Riser's just taken a much better fight here. But I, I, he didn't take enough of a fight to just win the game straight out because he lost a lot of these Archons, and you need Archons to tank for these. Immortals against this, uh, the Zealots. Yeah, but he does take a fourth base behind this. Whereas, this I mean, this is going to be. Zealots. Sorry, go on. I was going to say it's very difficult for Ryzer to hold his. I mean, Antoine Dester to hold his fourth base. And there's even more icons morphing in. Uh, and I think Ryzer might just win the game here. Yeah, it's starting to look a little, uh, a little sticky. The army supply definitely favoring Ryzer at this point. I think maybe accidentally uh, uh, rallying some of those. Uh, Zealots in at the end there. Just kind of careen into one of the Archons. Let's see if Antoine's coming in from two sides. Ooh, Riser's backing up, warping in. A few more Zealots. I think he's still going to go for this, though. Yeah, I think I think he, he would be d done not to, because he's just... His tech units are just so... He's got so many more of those tech units. There's more Archons. And this game is called An All-In Ryzen Take the Series. G G, dang. G, G. Well played. Wow. Well played for uh, for Risen all in. Extending yeah, I mean, uh, the extending their uh, their dominance so far. Oh, I guess they did lose that one to Psyx. I keep thinking that they've been undefeated. Yeah, really, really, really nicely played. Yeah, I, and it just wasn't looking like they, that both of them were going to break, but Ryzer just had that much bigger arc, and just his tech units was dealing more damage. He kept more of his tech units alive, and he just managed to spiral out of control there and managed to take the series. Antoine Dest did look really good in keeping up with the macro and everything. It just he took one bad fight, and it was, it was GG from then. Yeah, well, thanks so much for these teams for coming. And hanging out. Yeah. And really, uh, really sick uh, games tonight. Yeah, it's the first night that we had that actually went to match point, uh, if I can remember right. And even though there were no Terrans, it's very sad for me. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was some great games. Great games, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, and it was super fun casting with you. We yeah, kind of too. were doing dual roles today, and I think it went really, really well. It was really fun. Heck yeah, heck yeah! I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll do it again sometime. If any of their uh, yeah, the casters get caught up in traffic or <laughs> whatever that happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tossed it over to Felipe. I don't know if he's got any more, uh, any more stuff he wants to share with you guys. Felipe, you got, you got anything else, man? I got a little bit more to say. I'll just close us out. Um, I just want to, yeah, that was an awesome, awesome match. Uh, finally went to a game seven, a good long match. It's what we needed. Um, and I do want to remind y'all to, if you enjoyed this, to go ahead and tweet at us at Polygon Gaming and also to tweet at Crave Jerky. Show them your support for their help in making esports happen. Use the hashtags Crave Better and hashtag Jerky Life and tweet at them. Also, remember, you can donate to our Macherino and get some awesome Crave jerky of your own. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.